Uh, thank you. All right. Well, I, I think you should be able to use your voice, first of all, all day long without suffering any strain or pain. That would be, I think, more or less taken for granted. So we probably, all of us, have slightly different ideas about what good voice use amounts to. Um, I want to try and clarify this point because a lot of the Alexander pupils that I have, Alexander teachers, who come to me f to do a little work on their voices, I've noticed that their ideas about what good voice constitutes are not necessarily the same as my own. So, for those of you who don't know, my background is in training actors, largely, <coughs> and also as a vocal performer myself, doing voiceovers and such like. I'm going to have Wimbledon neck by the end of this, I can see it. <laughs> <laughs> However, um, if you feel left out, shout. <laughs> um, and the, the difference, I think, arises because we, there are two things, we can all speak unless we're damaged in some way, and we can all communicate fairly well. We can tell each other what, we, what our needs are, covering again a point that you were making there. Um, but we can do it more comfortably, usually, when we're quite close to somebody. And is it efficient voice use if, for example, I'm standing this close to you and I start talking to you like that, and I doubt very much whether the people over there are actually going to be hearing very much of what I'm saying. And certainly, it would be silly for me to deliver the talk. Like, can you actually hear what I'm saying, by the way? Oh, you can. Oh, rats. Oh, well, never mind. <laughs> but, but you get the basic idea. It's, it's horses for courses. So if I'm talking to all of you in this medium-sized space, I clearly want to make a little bit more noise. And the way I make it comfortably is not the, is not the same method of voice production, perhaps, as the method that I might choose to use if I were talking more intimately. There are two forms of uh, what it really amounts to is breathing. There's the sigh, where we take in a gollop of air, and then we talk until that air is more or less used up, and characteristically it's a little bit more powerful at the beginning, and then it tails away a bit. So we then take another gasp of air, and we keep going on that, and the quality of the voice tends to be a little bit airy, perhaps, and not to have a firm resonance. And it is, in the end, very tiring if you try to apply that method of producing the voice in this sort of situation for a long time. And if it's not tiring to the person who is making the vocal noise, it's probably quite tiring to the people who have to listen, because <laughs> what they're hearing is a series of gasps, and then a, a steady leakage of breath, as, uh, well, as the breath leaks away, in fact. So, I want to examine those two methods of producing the voice. Muscularly, they, they have different behaviour.